All right. Well, good afternoon. It is Wednesday, Webinar Wednesday with Can Do, an opportunity for us to learn, to take in the good knowledge that's going to be shared with us this afternoon, build our capacity so that we can go out there in creator's world and, and bring the best. Uh, we could, wherever it is, in the nations, in organizations, maybe as an entrepreneur, all of this knowledge today that's going to be shared, I think, is really applicable to wherever you are in your journey. Uh, it is entrepreneurship ecosystem, the five C's with Patricia Crow, we're honored to have you here. Uh, my name is Michelle. Normally, I'm joining you from a Miskachewa sky again, so Edmonton Treaty Six territory, but I am in the beautiful lands of our relatives in Mexico. So, I'm spending the week here, so I, I, you know, acknowledge, you know, the beautiful lands, the beautiful stories and traditions of the peoples here in Mexico. And I think it's it's always important, no matter where you go, to honor the original peoples of the land, just to even take a moment. Also, if you have time, take a moment to listen to the story as well. The stories, story, history. Um, and, and this week is particularly special in Canada, the northern part of Turtle Island, with the, the National Truth and Reconciliation Day on September 30th. You know, there's moments along in our journey where we just need to stop and just to acknowledge, you know, that history that has impacted Indigenous peoples for many, many years. And then it also tells the story of how resilient and strong we are and the gift that we can bring, you know, to wherever we go. So I hope wherever you are today that you are well. I hope that you are grounded. I hope you remember who you are and carry the gift that that only you carry, the gift you know that creator has only given you. So we take this moment just to acknowledge, you know, this day, you know, this opportunity that we can learn and grow and be in this this can do family, this virtual circle. So we just give thanks to creator and we give thanks and acknowledge, you know, the ones who walked, the ancestors who walked before us. You know, we we are not here on our own. We are able to stand tall because of you know the grandmothers, grandfathers who walked before us. So get in at Scompton and I thank you, Creator, for the gift of this day and this moment. So just take a moment even for yourself, extend some gratitude where you're joining us from. What is something that you're you're feeling really good about this day? So as we go on. I, it's my honor to introduce our next guest speaker. This is Patricia Carrow. She's looking fabulous today <laughs> and bringing some good knowledge that, you know, you know, I come from it, the teaching of, you know, women are the matriarchs and that matriarch medicine and power and good knowledge. So I believe she's going to bring that today. She's a Métis Cree woman originally from Northern Saskatchewan, Buffalo Narrows, who has been immersed in economic development activity throughout the province as former co-chair of the Saskatchewan Indigenous Economic Development Network and the ex officio board member of the Saskatchewan Economic Development Alliance, where partnerships, relationships, and strategies assist in providing opportunities that contribute to economic independence and individual livelihood of Indigenous peoples. That's so good to read and so good to hear. So working currently within Treaty 4 territory as an Indigenous economic development specialist, she connects with communities and economic and business development corporations, as a pathfinder to resources specifically with the 24 First Nations, three tribal councils, and Western region, three of the Métis Nation of Saskatchewan. <laughs> so previously as a business advisor, economic development with, with File Hills councils and Western region, oopsies. No, we're just gonna move along. So her role along included the advancement and promotion of entrepreneurial pursuits and the continue and she continues to provide pathfinding resources including promoting and supporting indigenous women's entrepreneurship events and women entrepreneurs knowledge hub reading regional meetings and business boot camps 
startup events and program. Oh my, so she's busy. And how she made time for us to share her knowledge, how honored do we feel? Like, you know, I, and I could have kept reading her bio. This woman has so much experience and knowledge and she's putting herself in circles because of her expertise and what she brings to the table. So we are in good hands this afternoon. <laughs> so the five C's she's going to talk about today. Uh, so we're just amazed that you made time for us today, Patricia. We honor who you are. We honor who the creator made you to be. We honor the message, the teaching, the knowledge that you're going to bring to us today. So welcome, welcome. I'm going to pass this virtual mic off to you. Good. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, I want to thank Kandu uh, for inviting me back. And so uh, and the team, I know that there's always uh, a lot of people that are, you know, beside us, but not always, you know, on camera with us. And so just a shout out to uh, Tara and Elsie and, and everyone else that uh, contributes to the success of these webinars. As stated in my bio, I am originally from Buffalo Narrows, but I'm so grateful, you talked about gratitude today, uh, to make my home and my livelihood here on Treaty 4 territory. Um, which of course are the traditional lands of the Nahayawak, the Nakaway, the Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, and of course, as you stated, the homelands of the Métis and the Michif Nation. Um, as always, in honor and support of our Métis and First Nations entrepreneurs and artists, I want to share um, the Remember Art Print Shawl that I'm wearing today um, for upcoming Truth and Reconciliation Day, but also a reminder that every child matters. And this was designed by uh, Chippewan artist John Rombo from Sioux Lookout, Ontario. And the feather pin that I'm wearing, it's in here somewhere, um, was designed by our one of our local artists, uh, Jonas Thompson of the Sagaikin First Nation. And my earrings were created by Métis designer Chelsea Belanger, um, Sakatawak beater from all across Saskatchewan. And so that's one of our ways of supporting and acknowledging the hard work and, and the efforts of our um, entrepreneurs. Uh, thank you for those that are joining in. Uh, this presentation and the previous presentation, Entrepreneurship Pathfinding, will be available through Kando. And I know that there's always so many resources to cover. And this presentation will hopefully provide you with some ideas as a catalyst to create your own community entrepreneurship ecosystem. Um, I encourage you to share your resources in the chat because every territory, nation, or community has unique challenges and successes, and we can all learn from one another. So let's get started. So today we're gonna to cover the topics of what is an entrepreneurship ecosystem. And in that system, we're going to look at some regional, some provincial and national supports. And then we're gonna talk about uh, Tip and Pim Sanu. Um, who are these people that we're talking about, their own boss? Um, hopefully we'll have some time for discussion at the end of the session. Um, I always like to have some dialogue at the end of the day. So when we look at entrepreneurship ecosystems, um, I want you to think about a community that wraps itself around the entrepreneur and their business. Um, I, I love that uh, visual of, of being wrapped like in a blanket in, in some respects, but um, if we think about it in, in terms of being a circle. So it's a network or interconnected system that surrounds us and everything, everything is part of an ecosystem, including the individual entrepreneur. So when we think about geographical areas, um, there's flows of different resources, activities, information within that circle that help the entrepreneur to grow, evolve, create transformation, explore creativity and innovation. So there, there are many models and I chose a local entrepreneurship ecosystem model as it may be an easier reflection within a smaller community or region um, or nation, and hopefully easier to remember, as Michelle stated, the five C's, coaching, capital, connections, climate, and culture. 
When we talk about coaching, this could be one-on-one -on -one mentoring. This could be advisors or advising. This could be business classes, uh, workshops on specific topics, online learning, uh, peer learning, any type of entrepreneurship, skill set, education, or training assistance. As always, there's many resources available online or in person, but noting that some have been developed for youth specifically and sometimes for uh, women specifically. However, the following slides are examples of coaches and advisors or programs open to Indigenous entrepreneurs. I know he's one of your favorite. I can see it on your smile. <laughs> and I just I watched him do the closing on the SOAR watch party on Thursday. And so this is uh, Kendall Netmaker. And of course, Kandu has created an online Indigenous coaching program with Kendall. And I know that it's been renewed. This one's specifically designed for First Nations and Métis Inuit youth from across Canada uh, within the age group of 17 to 35 years old. Uh, the course, of course, promotes youth leadership skills, resiliency, and the confidence to reach their full potential. And on my vision board, I have a message from Kendall, and his message always is, <clears throat> leaders always recognize the potential of other leaders that are coming up and rising. <clears throat> This is Joey Crampton. He is a Métis coach, um, founder and CEO of 360 Coaching Group. And again, does one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching, but also creates team and group programs and coaching circles. He's based out of Winnipeg. Um, but this was a quote from him in terms of entrepreneurship can challenge the very core of who you are. I believe with support and structure, you will uncover your true self and highest purpose to build success on your own terms. As stated, there's many options for coaching, education, and training. I do recommend that you please verify any services by setting up a virtual meeting, a, a, a telephone conversation, uh, ask for recommendations from his client, their clientele, and or talk to people within your circle for trusted individuals. The next three slides are examples of programs and training specific to Indigenous entrepreneurs. And so realizing that I'm using a local ecosystem model, the Saskatchewan Indian Institute of Technology, uh, otherwise referred to as SIT, has created an innovation and entrepreneurship program. It's a five month program and uh, their Cree word, Miuskaman means spring and the ground is breaking. You always have to laugh when I try to pronounce Cree words. <laughs> Uh, and so it's it's uh, it's really about knowledge, skills, support systems. Um, but one of the beautiful things is that they bring in um, elders, Indigenous entrepreneurs, knowledge keepers. They have land-based practices and local innovators. Uh, they also have their mobile maker lodge, and it's filled with cutting-edge technology and this is a mobile lodge, so it actually goes out to the communities. Um, so it gives individuals um, on First Nations and smaller communities access. Um, again, it's in an in-person program. However, the mobile unit can go out to your events or to help uh, promote the, their program. Through Gabriel Dumont Institute of Native Studies and Applied Research, uh, affectionately known as GDI, they uh, have a Pathways for Entrepreneurship, which is specifically for our Métis individuals. Um, so this is for entrepreneurs looking to create, maintain, or expand a business. They have support areas that include entrepreneurship training, industry training, professional services, um, self-employment transition allowance, and of course, your first sale bonus. And so I was curious to see what it, how much the bonus is. <laughs> and uh, 
According to their website, um, anybody who has completed a business plan and has made their first sale can apply for a $500 bonus. And so this is really, um, again, a pathway program set up for individuals and they connect you um, with individuals that in terms of creating your business plan, but also into industry and professional services. I know that there's a lot of national resources. I'm only highlighting one here. Uh, so this is the Canadian Center for Aboriginal Entrepreneurs. Uh, they have an in-person and also an online um, learning resource, and they provide a full business and entrepreneurship skills training uh, known as BEST. And so, <clears throat> again, there's lots of recommendations, lots of referrals, lots of um, different programs, especially in this coaching slash training space. Any questions on that before we move on? We'll just hold questions till the end. Okay. So capital. So when we're talking about capital, uh, this can be financial capital, social capital, human capital. Uh, today, we're just gonna focus on financial capital. And so we realize that when we talk to entrepreneurs that capital is always the biggest maybe initial roadblock for a lot of individuals. And there's a lot of people that are just motivated and they just go for it <laughs> and, uh, you know, create their logo, create their design, get going and start selling their, their, their goods and services. Um, however, that there are specific um, organizations that are out there, uh, including financial institutions, but I'm going to talk about NACA. So if you haven't heard of NACA yet, of course, it's the National Aboriginal Capital Corporations Association, and they host, uh, they have 58 uh, Indigenous financial institutions across Canada. And so their website is at the bottom there in terms of their financial institutions. And they have uh IFIs in all provinces and territories. Uh, we're fortunate in our particular province that we have um, a few different resources that are IFIs. Their biggest thing, of course, is providing developmental lending, uh, business financing, and with their locations, they service First Nations, Métis, and Inuit businesses. So this is Melanie Sunchild. Uh, she's one of our business support officers here in Saskatchewan. Uh, she works with the Saskatchewan Indigenous Enterprise Foundation. And again, part of her role um, is advisory. Uh, so, she, um, so she would provide First Nations financial advisory services, but she also is the contact for the Indigenous Women's Entrepreneurship Program. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more later. Um, However, they're known for microloans and, of course, their SEEF contribution program. I'm not going to get into the details of their program, but their website is there at www.sief.sk.ca if you want more information. This is Victoria Gagne. Uh, she's a business development specialist here with Clarence Campo Development Fund. Um, same thing on the on the Métis side. So Métis business financing. She's also the Indigenous Women Entrepreneurship Program contact. Microloans, loans, and grants. Uh, their programs extend also into equity, business development, uh, major business development, and that's expanded to women and to youth, and also community. Their website is at the bottom. Uh, www.clarencecampo.com. SIT has also created not just the mobile unit, but they've also created an Indigenous Innovation Accelerator Program. So this is a micro grant for Saskatchewan First Nations. So businesses must be 50% First Nations owned or operated. Again, we talked about the state of the art maker lodge space. Um, they also have an indigenous innovator in residence program and a variety of community and youth focused initiatives. So such as their innovation camps and their mobile market. 
uh, Maker Lodge. <clears throat> Across Canada, we have Community Futures Network, and they have a National Economic Development Program. There's over 267 community futures organizations across Canada. They provide small business services, small business loans, uh, tools and training, and of course, events. If you're starting, expanding, franchising, or selling a business. Uh, their website is also at the bottom of this page. Another organization that helps with startup capital is Futurepreneur. Uh, their focus, of course, is Indigenous entrepreneurs, um, youth, and they can provide up to $60,000 in financing. Um, they have an expert mentor um, for up to two years, of course, online resources, and they help you bring your business plan to life. So we find that with capital, startups that are receiving funding are dramatically more likely to survive, enjoy higher revenues and create more jobs. And those receiving a micro loan increases a business's chance of surviving by over 50%. Some other options for capital, of course, are crowdsourcing. You can ask your family, your friends, your clients. Um, you can look in terms of angel investors or seed funding. Um, you can look at pitch competitions um, and also bursaries that are available. Connections. This is this is what we're doing now. It's who's there, who's out there, um, who are the resources, what are the relationships, what are the networks, uh, what's there for mentorship. And so they can include peer networks like Chambers of Commerce. Uh, online platforms, trade fairs, other spaces where people network and gather, uh, including local entrepreneur networking events, um, or could be physical spaces that connect business owners with each other, including co-working spaces, maker spaces, and business incubators. Of course, all of these are part of that entrepreneurial ecosystem. So the following are examples, um, however, there are many other connections out there that are available to all individuals, like for example, Startup Canada. Uh, these are just, again, um, more local, but specific indigenous programs and services. <clears throat> so Saskatoon Regional Economic Development Association, known as Sarita, created the S Sask Startup Institute. Um, they help individuals with market research reports, business advising, business services directory. They uh, connect you for a very reasonable nominal fee to accountants, lawyers, professional services and referrals. They also create online workshops and training and have video resources. And they're working right now with our Indigenous Women Entrepreneurs um, business advisor. So one of the programs that they've created is Spark where they're connecting local business owners with exports. I'm sorry, experts. <laughs> uh, their website is at the bottom at skstartup.ca. So Indigenous Women Entrepreneurship Program. So this was launched in 2022. Um, NACA is the head of it per se, but we know how many IFIs that they have out there. So it launched across 32 IFIs across Canada. And so this particular program right now is, has an ongoing intake for individuals who wanna participate in their mentorship program. So if you're in the ideation stage or startup stage, uh, you can do the application. So you would have to contact um, NACA directly, or if you could have a good working relationship with your local IWE, whether it's C for CCDF, they can help connect you in terms of um, the guide and, and the application. And so there is a small grant attached to this. And we all know that capital is an issue. And so being able to access even $3,000 for your startup that helps with registering your business, developing a logo, it helps with inventory, purchasing equipment, um, you know, a little bit of marketing, doing some advertising. And the mentor um, 
also receives a little honorarium. And so right now uh, they are looking for individuals who are interested in this program. So I would encourage uh, Indigenous women entrepreneurs to get involved or to at least access this information. They also have, of course, business support officers, um, routine workshops and training. Again, there is microloans available. I believe the amount is maximum $20,000. However, these are meant more for individuals that might be doing this as a side business. Um, they used to be referred to as hustles, but uh, side gigs or side businesses. And <clears throat> there's some information there in terms of NACA and the resources, um, and then the email of iwe at naca.ca for more information. <clears throat> I've participated in a couple of these. Uh, so our Native Women's Association of Canada, uh, their entrepreneurial outreach and navigation program has created Be the Drum. And they have entrepreneurial navigators that work with Indigenous women from across Canada. Uh, they provide mentorship and, of course, business resources and also women's business directory. Their contact information is at the bottom of the page. We'll talk about Export Development Canada. Um, we're finding that a lot of entrepreneurs are actually exporting their goods. And uh, for example, whether it's shawls or earrings or whatever your goods and services are, uh, we do have some entrepreneurs um, that are in agri-food. Uh, for example, wild rice is one of those things that do get exported, teas, those kind of, kind of goods and services. So there's indigenous supports through exporting, uh, selling goods and services produced in Canada. So they provide a network of partners and trade advisors, and of course, all the tools and resources that you need. Um, I think through COVID, we really shifted to, uh, you know, more webinars, um, virtual meetings. However, I think what it's done is it's really expanded uh, the ability to access information, um, you know, and, and like today, you might not be able to join us at this time, but the information is going to be available later. And so it's just created, I think, to me, such a, a plethora of resources that you can access later. Um, they also show you how to protect your business and access funding to grow and learning about new markets. And so their website is at the bottom of the page. And we also have Indigenous Innovation Initiative. They have access to capital, but their focus is building capacity, cultivating networks, and of course, driving interest. They have um, seed funding, but they also have innovators um, in terms of business organizations, social enterprises, or groups that are developing innovative products, programs, or services. I do wanna make a comment um, that a lot of times when we think about networking, uh, there are a lot of um, programs that are going on. The easiest way to get information from individuals is connecting with your local IFI. So for example, here we've got the Spark events that we talked about earlier. Uh, SMEDCO, uh, which we highlighted in our last presentation, um, has Métis Mingles. Uh, CCDF has their IWE social gatherings. Uh, West has uncorked networking circles. So there's a lot of um, networking going on, uh, support systems going on. And so I just encourage you to tap into your local IFI. So climate. <clears throat> I know that we all talk about the weather and how it's changing. <laughs> But this particular climate is really external from the entrepreneur. Um, climate is business registrations, um, taxation, rules, permit systems, um, what kind of investments uh, in business development. And so this can be a little bit of that part where it can be a little bit overwhelming, but there's some beautiful resources that have been created to address some of these issues. And one of the first couple of resources is Canada's business registries. So if I wanted to create Patricia A. Crow Communications, 
um, or Crow Communications, I can go to the business registry. It's a free service and it's, um, it's created by the Canadian Association of Corporate Law Administrators and they oversee all the official business registries in Canada. And so I can go in there and I can do a name search under Crow or C-R-O-W or C-R-O-W-E and find all of the businesses that are named with those two names. Um, so this is a great way to, you can't bypass the business registration process. However, when you're creating your business name, this is a great place to start and, and see what's out there. And I find that a lot of individuals struggle with sometimes creating names. So this is a good uh, place to just get some ideas flowing for yourself also. And I love this resource. So BizPal has went through a huge revamp. And this is um, another free search service for all of Canada to search permits, licenses that you may need to start your business. And so if you go to bizpal.ca, it's for all of Canada. You can put in your province. Uh, you don't have to put in... Um, you have to enter your location, but you don't have to put your industry in. And it will come up with everything that you need uh, in terms of registering your business, or if there's certain permits that you need, if you're doing construction, if you're doing hairdressing, if you're doing you know, whatever type of trade. And so it's a great resource. And then it connects you to here, for example, in Saskatchewan, um, to register a business, we have to go through uh, ISC. So it provides you with all the contact information. Um, so I encourage, encourage you guys to check that out. Some other resources under permits and taxation rules. There are resources out there that include entrepreneurship guides. And so these have been created by um, organizations or networks, realizing that <clears throat> you know, we wanted to provide something to entrepreneurs that it was kind of in a, a little bit of a, a path finding. Um, and so in guides, you'll find different types of resources, but explanations of what types of businesses are out there, things that you need to know in terms of business numbers, um, taxation for Indigenous business, um, insurances, do we need it? Do we not need it? Um, cash flow and other resources. I've highlighted um, one of our local FHQ Developments Entrepreneurship Guide. Uh, that's their website there. That'll take you to that guide. And at the back of that guide, there's additional resources that are available. I'm also aware of guides through Women Entrepreneurs Knowledge Hub and other, um, other entrepreneurship, like Indigenous Business Link have created guides also. The government of Canada, they can be a little bit scary. <laughs> However, they've got some wonderful information on tax exemptions under Section 87 of the Indian Act. If you are First Nations and if you're starting your business on reserve or if you're hiring Indigenous employees, um, there's some really good information out there. Again, uh, depending on what your situation or circumstance is. So I would start with www.canada.ca. And I also wanna just highlight that <clears throat> uh, KPMG created a resource called Indigenous and Canadian Taxation. And so it was done in 2020, but they've updated it. And it provides, um, just a great overview in terms of tax treatment of uh, Indigenous employees. So culture, and this is a word that can mean so many different things. Uh, so when we're talking about entrepreneurship ecosystems, the culture is the community perception and their support and their acceptance of entrepreneurship. So when people support local businesses and community understands the value of local businesses, they will have a stronger local entrepreneurial ecosystem. So there's many different ways that we can support um, entrepreneurs. We can create webinars, virtual calls, we can focus on 
uh, one aspect of entrepreneurship, whether it be branding, marketing, sponsorships, financing, mentorship. We can create open networking strategies where we can learn from one another. We can highlight Indigenous entrepreneurs, um, share that information on your social media. Some people who like to blog, I'm not one of those people, uh, but buy local. You can join social media Indigenous entrepreneur pages. Um, you can create a hub spot to promote entrepreneurs, webinars or presentations, or as we heard earlier, host um, small business events and webinars specifically for Indigenous entrepreneurs. It's an opportunity for business owners to learn, share ideas and connect uh, with each with other like-minded entrepreneurs. So <clears throat> cooperatives first, we highlighted them in the pathfinding resources. So this is their co-op creator. And this is an opportunity to go online um, and it reviews all of their startup resources. And a lot of people don't understand, you know, what are cooperatives? Um, you know, we kind of think of, you know, the local co-ops. Uh, so it's a great resource. Um, they provide uh, advisors also. So it's online tools, resources, business planning guides, uh, introduction to cooperatives, um, co-ops in Canada, uh, workshops. And so I would encourage you to, if you're interested in a cooperative um, or to learn more about cooperatives, um, check out their website at www.coopcreator.ca. We also heard about Women Entrepreneurs Knowledge Hub in our last presentation. So this is a national network. Uh, they talk about, they do a lot of researching. They do, they have a lot of resources. Uh, Women Entrepreneurs Knowledge Hub has an Indigenous specific area. So Ashley Richard is, uh, leads that one nationally. We also have regional hubs. And so there's 10 regional hubs across Canada. In Saskatchewan, we have one here. Um, they've created things like the Indigenous Women Entrepreneurs Gift Guide. They do a lot of reports and analysis in terms of the impacts, um, especially on Indigenous women in business, uh, some of the, the challenges and the barriers that they may be going through. But they also have created some other resources, including things like those business guides that I just spoke about. Um, I encourage you, they've also got a sharing platform. And the sharing platform is one of those things like, you give and you receive. And so um, it's an opportunity to go in, ask some questions, share some, some resources. Um, and then it's hooked up with all Indigenous women entrepreneurs that have signed up for it across the country. Their website is at the bottom at www.wehk.ca. We also have the National Indigenous Women Entrepreneurs um, idea connector. So I love this. This was a new resource that I located um, preparing for my last interview or presentation. It's full, chock full of videos, interviews, panel discussions, any ideas, experiences, uh, subject matter experts, entrepreneurs. And so if you're, <laughs> if you're a little bit of a a tech or a nerd, nerdy geek person like myself, uh, this is a place that it's just like, woo, it's like an online library, just full of different ideas and different resources. And so I'm so grateful that I was able to, to locate this one. So they're at uh, ideaconnector.net, bridging the gap. So being part of an ecosystem is really showing that the pieces interact, uh, that we're here uh, to support one another, and those pieces need to support one another. Um, and each piece depends upon each other. So much like a puzzle, our ecosystem needs each piece, each C in this case, to show the full picture and increase its impact. So who are we doing this for? When we talk about um, 
Tipipimsawak, uh, those that rule themselves, um, or Tipipimsu, Tipipimsu? <laughs> I don't know, Michelle, you try it and see. <laughs> um, what we realize is that entrepreneur is kind of a, a modern term. And so when we talk about our First Nations and our Métis entrepreneurs, um, how would we have normally refer to them? And so this was as close as a word that I could come up with. It's a Cree word, meaning their own boss. And so there's going to be a webinar, I'm sorry, um, a podcast coming out. And um, it's going to be highlighting First Nations and Métis entrepreneurs from across Canada, uh, talking to them about their journeys, talking to them about their stories. And so <clears throat> um, I have put everybody's name at the bottom here. Uh, these are all Saskatchewan local entrepreneurs. Some of them are northern, some of them are central, some of them have moved from Saskatchewan and into different territories and uh, have started their businesses there. But it's a reminder that, you know, when we talk about entrepreneurs, that it's really important to get to know the person. And I can, I can't, I can't say that I know everybody in terms of the artists that I'm wearing, but um, usually even, even when I'm purchasing locally, I will get to know who the person is. And I also get their card so that I can help promote them, um, as we said earlier, because we want to support our First Nations and Métis entrepreneurs. Uh, so everybody has a dream. Uh, some of them have a business idea. Every single person in this picture has a unique set of skills, expertise, knowledge, and passion. And it's not up to us to offer advice on their idea or on their goals were there as supports. Um, and so again, encouraging to, you to get to know who they are. And as we look at resources, it's only through understanding their, their path of where they are, whether they're in a ideation, a startup, a tech company, if they're starting an agricultural company. So the only way that you're gonna be able to do that is by asking some leading questions and really getting to know the individual. Uh, some people are doing hydroponic, aquaponics. Um, Taylor is looking for, you know, some resources in terms of um, land-based uh, teachings. And so to really direct individuals to the resources um, that are for them, we really need to understand, you know, who they are, but also what goods or services that they're providing. These are some of the examples of those goods and services. And so if they're involved in arts and crafts, um, are they involved in language? Um, you know, there's also culture, culture grants. So there's all kinds of good stuff going on out there. Is it a full-time venture? Is it a side hustle? Is it a tech startup? Um, are they purchasing an existing business or a franchise, or are they thinking of starting a cooperative that we talked about? So these are important questions that we need to know when we're working with individuals and with entrepreneurs. So it's time for some discussion. <laughs> Wow, you brought so much good information, Patricia, so much. So I had to, re oh, I don't know why my, the sound's going off. Um, so we're going to open up this floor for any questions. I know we have Ken and Chrissy here. This is an opportunity. I mean, I just, I was like madly writing notes down and I've just referred to my notes. You brought in really good information. First of all, are you going to um, make this deck accessible to participants? Webinar meeting. Sometimes speakers will send their PowerPoint in case we missed some of the information on the slides. There's no mm -hmm. pressure whatsoever. Um, but sometimes, you know, the participants like to receive that because there was a lot of really good information. I was trying to take some pictures of the, uh, <laughs> particularly the Indigenous women. Yeah. I never knew. I never knew that was a resource. So, Excellent. Excellent so, job. Well, thank you. So 
So even since our entrepreneurship pathfinding presentation in May, there's so many things that have changed. There's so many things that are evolving. And that's a beautiful thing. It's an ecosystem. It's it's not, it's supposed to be organic. It's supposed to flow. Um, and so I know that the webinar, this is recorded. It's going to be on your website. Um, but I also know that the presentation, if you do want a copy of the presentation, uh, just to reach out to, I believe, Tara, and maybe she can yes. speak. Um, and so I would encourage not to just get this particular presentation, but both of them. And so the entrepreneurship Perfect. pathfinding, uh, because there's going to be different resources on both. Awesome. Um, just, I'm just, oh, I feel overwhelmed about how much support there is for Indigenous entrepreneurship. Like, I think it's beautiful. I think it's about time. And, you know, <laughs> I just tapping into these resources, you know, to really help us to bring, I really, I got goosebumps at that. I think it was the last slide you showed with, you know, those you know, different um, gifts that we as an Indigenous people bring to the table. And it's, you know, again, it's about time that we, you know, we let our gifts, we let the world see that mm -hmm. we're shining in our gifts. So, you know, what an inspiration this is. Such good information, good um, resources. So, Ken, Chrissy, do you have any comments or any questions for Patricia? I'm just so happy. <laughs> <laughs> It's Ken. It's uh, I have one suggestion. Always, I always ask, what business are you in uh, to uh, new entrepreneurs that may not be considering um, a particular um, avenue? Um, um, so I ask, what business are you in? Are you in the business of making money? And uh, so then I and then I go on with my. Uh, uh, you should be looking at this, or you should be looking at that. So that uh, that's about all I have to to. But a, a good presentation. I appreciate it. So. Uh, uh, it just uh, yeah, uh, the uh, your future is uh, your own imagination, and uh, you know if uh, if you get a twinkle in your eye uh, and think that there's an opportunity to make some money, then uh, get involved and uh, give it a shot. And you'll never uh, you know uh, you may not make money, but your your uh, what you what you invest in it, you're gonna you know you'll it, it'll move you'll take it with you. Mm -hmm. And you're so right, Ken, um, you know, that passion or, or what moves people from moving in out of mainstream and, and taking on this venture of starting their own, um, you know, that passion, that story uh, needs, it comes from somewhere. And <clears throat> I was really motivated um, by uh, a local entrepreneur that I met. And when I when I walked into her storefront and I purchased actually those gloves belong to me. <laughs> I purchased those gloves and I asked her, I said, how did you get started? Um, you know, did you look at venture capital? Did you look at, you know, loans? Uh, what did you do? And she said, I didn't do any of that. And what she did is that she took her Indian residential school day, day money. And, uh, and she, transferred that into creating her own business and she really wanted uh, to create something beautiful out of that tragic past that she had and thinking about that it does get me a little bit choked up um, and you know it, she is there to make money but at the same point she really is there to also share her gifts share her talents uh, and also she's giving back by creating uh, sewing circles. Um, and so I, I find that with Indigenous entrepreneurs, yes, you're right that we need to, you know, start thinking about, you know, returns on investment and profit lines and break even points. And, you know, how do we make money and how do we start participating in that, you know, thrive economy? But I find with entrepreneurs that a lot of times that they're really looking in terms of how can they give back? And how can they share um, the things that they've learned? So thank you for that, Ken. Yeah, well, that was just a beautiful, an, uh, uh, one of hundreds, thousands of stories that you just shared, you know, um, that woman who had that amazing gift of making those gloves right and then also just giving back giving her gift to the world but also I, I can imagine within that 
just finding that healing as well. Mm -hmm. oh, just, you know, the, the gift of our gifts, but also the gift of story when we bring our gifts to the world as well. So, wow, just what a great presentation this afternoon. Um, Christy in the chat box for Mike and Networking, that she's thankful. And of course, continue um, continued support of you, Patricia, as always, she's saying. So thank you for <laughs> being here. Uh, thank you for for even for me, you know, I've been in I've been an entrepreneur for I would say 14, 15 years. And even today's presentation, um, you know, it ignited a little fire, a little spark in me again. Uh, so I, I got some um, resources that I'm going to have to follow up on that you had shared with us today. So I thank you. I uh, thank you so much, Kinnan and Svantan, and thank you for, for bringing your knowledge to this table and, and lending it and sharing it. And I, and I just, it can only help us to become stronger and better in what we are doing in our corner of the world. It's, uh, so, it's, there Ken, it again. Is. Oh. it's Ken again. I got, I've got a suggestion. Um, uh, and that is that, um, uh, uh, would be uh, entrepreneurs should take a look at their their life history and um, see their transferable skills. I know mm -hmm. one um, IPOC uh, lady who uh, opened a um, uh, selfie museum in Niagara Falls, and uh, like, I, what what is a selfie museum? So I'm saying to her, <laughs> what is a selfie? And she's making a go of it. She has she had um, so it's it's got little booths. It's all pink. It's got little booths of di different, so you go in and you, you under different uh, different scenarios. There, uh, every booth is a little different. There's a there's a bank vault. Uh, uh, it used to be a bank, so the, the the building used to be a bank. So it's got a bank vault. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's uh, she's got some add-on stuff. Uh, but uh, she used to uh, bartend, so she's got. Uh, she ended up with. Uh, she started with the selfie museum. She ended up with a uh, with a liquor license, and then she got some food <laughs> food license. And and she she her experience was she did did some photography so she's got a studio in the back now it's not a big facility but mm -hmm. she keeps changing it around and 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 renting and and, and I mean she's not making uh, heaps of money but who who even knows what a selfie museum is <laughs> yeah I'm gonna have to look that one up Ken which yeah in um, Niagara Falls in Niagara, in Niagara Falls uh, Goldie's um, but, Goldie's uh, um, uh, Goldie's selfie museum in Niagara Falls, but uh, yeah, so it's all the skills that she's had, and she's not that old. All the all the her transferable skills, she's uh, cashing in on them. And like, uh, how do you get a liquor license when you know, like, uh, uh, when all you have is a selfie museum? Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, well, I hate to cut you off, Ken, but I know that we're under a certain time frame, and so thank you for sharing that. And you're right, it's thinking outside the box and, and that creativity and being innovative. And so as we know that there's so many untapped resources available. So having open discussions like this, you know, provides new insights. And it also, as I stated at the very beginning, I'm hoping that this is a catalyst. And so sometimes if those resources are not available, sometimes we have to look at terms of creating those resources. And so developing or maintaining resources or support networks created by and for Indigenous peoples, it's really vital for empowering our entrepreneurs to succeed and to create sustainable businesses. That's my closing remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patricia. And thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you feel good in your spirit and excited about our future. All right. Be well, everyone. We'll see you next time. <laughs>